and welcome back, everybody. The month of May is Vision Awareness Month. I'm going to be chatting with ophthalmologist uh, who is Dr. Boise Mahabir, and uh, he's also the former chief of staff of the Port of Spain General Hospital and the former head of the eye clinic in Port of Spain General Hospital as well. Good morning, Dr. Mahabir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Now, the month of May is Vision Awareness Month, and you know there are so many things to, to chat about. So let's speak first about what Vision Awareness Month means and what it is meant to do. Well, really, um, a large number of people who have lost their vision or lost part of the vision, uh, it's avoidable if they're aware of the condition and if they took action in time to, first of all, see a doctor, be diagnosed, and for treatment to start. So Vision Awareness Month is really meant to get these patients, these people, uh, aware of the condition that they have, if they have such a condition. And treatment will be quite effective in having them maintain their vision. You so know really, this is what the, the uh, month of vision awareness is, is supposed to do, or at least make people aware of it. You know, uh, vision is something that so many people, well, myself included, we take for granted, you know, because you wake up in the morning, you get up and you're able to see, but that is not the same for everyone. You know, there's a large contingent of people who are vision impaired to some degree or fully. Uh, when it comes to common eye disorders or things that cause vision impairment, what, what are some of the most common? Well, in this country, like in most countries, there are three things that really account for the vast majority of our vision diseases, diseases that cause patients to lose the vision, either um, partially or, or fully. And they are really um, glaucoma, diabetic eye disease, eye disease from being diabetic. And the third one is, of course, cataract. Right. These will account for, if you like, 80% or more of the people who have lost or who part or all of their vision. Now, when you, if and you, this lose, has always been so. If you lose, if you lose uh, some of your vision or, or, or total loss of vision, are there, is there any way in which you can regain vision or is it lost for good? Um, no, it's not lost for good. Um, it, it varies really on the condition. Cataract, if you have a cataract and you've lost vision because of the cataract, cataract surgery is very successful maybe well over 95% of the patients will regain their vision and probably more like 98, 99%. So for, as far as cataract go, it is reversible and it is just a matter of having the cataract removed. Having said that, not all cataracts need surgery. Okay. Awesome. The other condition, diabetic retinopathy, a lot depends on how far gone it is, how, how much disease, the disease has progressed. Uh, this, again, is reversible to some extent if it's not, you know, um, what we call terminal or, right. or so bad that um, you really cannot regain any vision. But most patients, most diabetics who have um, symptoms and who see a doctor, they will do well. They will get back, if not all, a um, significant part of their vision. Um, and glaucoma is different. The, when we say glaucoma, there are different types of glaucoma. Okay. But um, we are talking of what's called chronic glaucoma or open angle glaucoma. Now, that is different. And the danger with glaucoma is, uh, is really, one, you have no symptoms. You are not aware of the disease. And you lose your vision, believe it or not, without knowing. You can lose a significant amount of your vision without being aware really? that your vision is being compromised. So the fact that there are no symptoms and that the vision loss is irreversible, these patients really need to be um, diagnosed early and treated early. If diagnosed early and if treated early, they can maintain the vision probably for the rest of their life. And um, although most glaucoma patients the glaucoma starts in the mid-40s or early 50s. 
recently, we've been seeing a large, not a large, quite a few patients who are in their 20s who have glaucoma. And this, of course, is what we call the chronic glaucoma or the open angle glaucoma. Well, that, that the other types my, of... Sorry, go ahead. That leads me to my next question. Uh, is there, you know, is any human behavior and, and practices responsible for some of these things, especially glaucoma, especially in young people? Um, sorry, what sort of practices, you asked? Could you repeat, please, doctor? Uh, I'm not hearing you. Oh, okay. I was asking um, whether human behavior is responsible for anything related to glaucoma, especially in young people. Um, lifestyle you're talking about? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Are you hearing me, doctor? Hello. Yeah. Um, yeah, not really. Um, glaucoma can be caused by trauma okay. at any age group. But these people uh, usually have a family history of glaucoma, although that is not necessary. And um, it's nothing related to lifestyle as such. It is a more genetic predisposition. And, um, that again, there really is, isn't much they can do if it's far gone, but if it's diagnosed early and treated effectively, then um, the long-term prognosis for vision is very good. All right. Well, yeah. Doctor, um, I want to thank you for your time this morning. This is an ongoing series, so we are going to chat again, but we do have to cut for the news uh, at the top of the hour for 7 o'clock. So I want to thank you so much, Dr. Boise Mahabir for joining us this morning and giving us this information as we start this series for Vision Awareness Month. And I was chatting with him. He's an ophthalmologist, former chief of staff of Port of Spain General Hospital. We now take a break for the news at the top of the hour, and we'll be back with the second half of the show after that. <laughs>